It's taking too long. Patience. Patience? I don't see what patience has to do with this. It should have happened by now. Life keeps to its own timetable, not ours. Oh, it doesn't stop us from trying. Good morning! Your ruler has risen! Rejoice! And let bellow the horns of birth! Immortal protector of the nation, progeny of the great bloodlines, master of strategies, eternal conductor, and forger of matrimony. We're here to advise you on how to handle ruling and commanding... Every time! The horns of battle! Fine, we'll have to do this later. The Cadence is attacking. Heroes, jump in! The ruler will be with you shortly! And off they go. We'll explain later. We just need you to take command, because our citizens, understandably, find it hard to trust a giant talking chalice. We are not just a giant talking chalice. But the nation will listen to you, because you're of their blood. Forged from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the bloodline ritual that was used to create you also bound you to us. So you can never leave the throne. But do not despair. You can still command your heroes. Look inward, and you will find that your mind can follow them anywhere. You see your heroes yet? Yeah? Great. Now, take command and search the area. The Cadence is out there somewhere. of the day. We can't tell you much about the Cadence because not much is known. It's old, first sighted centuries ago. It cares only for destroying our nation with its corruption. That's where pawns like you see here come in. Think of them as attack dogs the Cadence creates to spread corruption in the world. Arguably the lowliest of pawns are more nuisance than menace. But if you're going to remember one thing, don't let those runts form a posse. Keep them apart. Otherwise it'll be like when paper jacks get together at a tavern. Except not the best night of your life. Could have been worse. 
At least they belong to heroic bloodlines. Oh yes, we forgot to mention. Normal humans cannot survive even a single touch from the kings. But because the bloodlines of your heroes are attuned to us and have our power flow... How about that, eh? One down, untold millions to go. I get way too excited about this. one of our alchemists. Brilliant mind in a delicate body. Not worth much in a close quarters battle, but they make up for it with their nasty exploding flasks. Just watch out for friendly fire. The explosions are big, so aim well, or keep your heroes back. Trust us, you don't want to be on the receiving end of one of their concoctions. They'd rather stay back and snipe at you than fight up close. Be wary. If your heroes are hit, they may forget some of their combat training. The mind is just as vulnerable as the body.
that went better than I expected. Well done. Well done. I knew you'd have a knack for this. Right. So this is our nation, and as we said, we are not in the best of shape. That muck you see surrounding us is the Cadence. It's what created the pawns, corrupted our lands, and is slowly tightening on us like a noose. But we do have one advantage. Thanks to several enchanted materials that make up our body, we've been endowed with certain powers. One of them being a way to cleanse the Cadence from this world. It's really quite a miraculous process, wherein we harness the properties of- The thing is, it takes a long time for us to charge up for this. A long time. All of the heroes you just commanded in battle will be long gone when we're finally ready. With all that time still ahead, we need you to protect us. You will take charge of the nation, command its citizens worthy of becoming heroes, and ensure that the Cadence does not reach the capital. Now let's check out that keep you just saved. The keeps. Bloodline forgers of the nation. The stonemasons did good work here. I'll thank them later. Here you will appoint one hero as a regent, and one as a partner. And the more experience they have, the more they'll pass on to their children. That goes for traits and personalities too. Everything's game. And keep in mind, assigning heroes to keeps retires them from combat. You can't have one foot at home and one in the battlefield. Now that your regent is appointed, it's time to decide on a partner. Although this isn't an arrangement out of love, who knows? Maybe it'll turn into that. We've seen it happen. Personality, traits, experience, they're all important here. But just because this is an arrangement of necessity doesn't mean you should reduce these heroes to a pile of numbers, either. They deserve better than that. Many happy returns. Let's give the newlyweds some privacy, eh? It's a lot to take in, but you'll handle it, or your mind will become as cracked as our body. You'll be fine. Now then, please join us back at the capital so we can show you some of your other responsibilities. And welcome back. You are here, right? It's a little hard to tell if you're still in your mind's eye or whatever. This is where your heroes return to after battle. From here, you may equip them with any skills or weapons they may have earned, as well as perform research. Basically, we can devote some of our power to help the war effort and the nation. Whether it's building new keeps, starting a Sage Rites Guild, or a Standards Crucible. Fun stuff. Hmm. Building more keeps is likely the most pressing option, as you'll be able to foster more bloodlines, but don't shun the other possibilities. With your approval, we can research weapons, potions, armor. And if the amount of time required dissuades you from researching something, consider the Sage Rites Guild. Any hero who joins the Sage Rites will hasten the time required for any pursuit. They will never see combat again. Keep in mind, most of our power is focused on charging up to cleanse the Cadence, so we can only devote enough energy to research one thing at a time. That includes searching for new heroes. It takes a lot of effort to find people attuned with us, and it'll only get harder the more we do it. But choose whatever you want. One more thing, the end of this war is not even a glimpse on our horizon yet, but your immortality gives us an advantage. The ability to step back and let time pass. You can start and stop this timeline at will. 
but we'll also stop it for you should something require your attention. Like a cadence attack. That is a probable possibility. of birth. A cause for celebration indeed. Babies have been born before today. And it was glorious every time, was it not? What, unbearable shrieking and smells that are even worse? That's your idea of glorious. Yes. It feels weird accomplishing something without having beaten it into submission. Hmm. Should have seen my books after I was done with them. choices on the battlefield. Now, I'll be making choices on the battlefield of life. <clears throat> what? Come on. I will not apologize if I'm passionate about it. You know when you guide the heroes in battle? Well, sometimes the people, your heroes included, will want your advice on matters they can't decide themselves. They'll be putting their choices in your hands and sometimes their lives. And the decisions you make may affect the morale of the nation. Unfortunately, we've learned that the cadence feeds off grief and malcontent. So if something tragic happens, corruption can spread very quickly. But the opposite is true, too. We will trust your decisions, whatever they end up being. Finally! 
Finally, some action! As you have no doubt surmised by now, it takes time for the Cadence to create its pawns. So they're only able to attack every few years. Unfortunately, you cannot fight back multiple incursions at the same time. Our primary focus is charging up to destroy our enemy, and we can only allot enough of our energy to send out one group of heroes at a time. Pawns don't last long outside of the Cadence, either. So even if you win one battle, it'll be too late to fight the other. Choose wisely, and... Blow the horns! <laughs> Do you feel it? That little tingling in the air before a fight? I know they do. Here is where you can make any last minute substitutions or preparations before you deploy your heroes to battle. And once you give the word, they'll jump in and we'll handle the rest. Make sure they close their mouths when they jump. Now send someone ahead to scout enemy positions, and then we shall flank through. Hey! What? Oh. Oh, sorry. Old habits. Attacking at close range is good, but attacking from afar, where one can think and plan, is better. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear your group leaving you behind as you line up that perfect shot. Actually, the hunter will be in front of the group. Now tell me that wasn't fun. I admire the ruptures. What? They rush into battle, no concern for their own safety, knowing that as soon as they come upon their prey, they'll explode into a corrosive mess of pain and suffering. Even in death, they still hurt their enemies. It's beautiful. And disconcerting.
This is a caber jack. They hit things with a caber. Sometimes they hit hard and put things down. Other times they hit not so hard and just knock things out. That's all you're going to say? Simplest way of life there is. Caber jacks. Profound purveyors of violence.
quite a mind for strategy you have. I had a bit of deja vu watching this one. That skirmish up at Burke's Hollow? The third day of the Second Battle of Kendor. <laughs> Forgot about that one. With the magpies. Oh, yeah. 